Amen. We are glad to be here tonight. And um, I was sent by Dr. Joe to start tonight. And so, he is very much in town, okay? It's not a trick at all. It's a big, big plan. And so, by the grace of God, tomorrow he will join us and finalize everything we are sharing tonight hallelujah so i'm just a john the baptist i've been sent to prepare the way and um he has a wonderful team that always follows him father joseph is here can we see a wave hallelujah and by his side is pastor judith wemako from the north hallelujah wonderful wonderful people and any other person who came because of Dr. George, I might not know you personally. I'm sorry. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for tonight. And it is hosting his presence. Say hosting his presence. Hosting his presence. Now, I'll just start and I'll let the Holy Ghost take over. And then we end from there. Then tomorrow we come again. Amen. Amen. So I want your heart to be very much open for what God is about to do tonight. Um every time god wants to do something in your life he will send a man into your life when satan also wants to do something to your life he will send a man into your life so either ways man is the method of the spirit man is the method of the spirit of god man is the method of the, the devil and his agents hallelujah so tonight god has sent us to you to speak unto you something very crucial that we are missing in our generation it is hosting the presence. See, hosting the presence. Many people like to come to church. They like the idea of church. But they don't realize that coming to church or loving the things of God is not equal to the God of the things. You can even worship worship and not worship the God in the worship. Some people love to sing. But they don't care about the God they are singing about. And so there's a very thin line between the presence of God and your emotions. Sometimes you think it's the presence by an emotional spirit. It's just your emotions playing games with you. And so we want to get into what this presence of God is. Now the presence of God is very key. Very, very, see, it's very important. Very important. See the presence of God presence of is very important. very important. Hallelujah. And this presence of God is so, so vital that Satan has lied to us not to focus on it. Please, are you here? Please, are you here? Yeah. Okay. Satan has lied to us not to focus on the presence of the Lord. So we don't even know what the presence is less to talk about what you are even hosting in the first place. If you don't know the presence, you don't even know what you are hosting. You don't know how to host it. You don't know how to put yourself in a position where the presence can always be upon your head. But that's how come we have this conference. And at the end of this conference, understanding this key will take you far in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, if you read the Bible, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 31, it says that it says, favor is vain, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord is of great price. Now, the reason why he's saying favor is vain is not because favor is not a good thing. He's saying that if you get favor by trying to win favor, it means favor will make you tired. If you try to get favor or get something by means of your beauty, the reason why it is vanity means that someone more beautiful will replace you. Amen. Amen. So, favor is vain because you keep asking for favor at every stage of your life. But I remember the prophet Daniel. Bible said and was found in Daniel an excellent spirit. So that even if he was not favored by the mother of Belteshazzar, the Bible says, I know a man when the handwriting came upon the wall that many, many tackle up for sin. You have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting. He said, even we know a certain man called Daniel. And he said, the spirits of the gods are in him. I don't like him, but he's the only one who can help us. It is a certain spirit the man carried, not favor. So trying to be la la su la la, being nice to every boss because you want favor, is a short circuiting of who you are created for. 
Because you carry what we call an excellent spirit. Even if they don't like you, they'll still choose you. <laughs> it's called an excellent spirit. You, they have given a law that if anyone prays, the person will be arrested. Daniel opens the window for them to see him praying. He says, I'm not going to be nice to the king because he has given a law so that he will be his favorite. I'm going to tell him that I still pray even if I'm going to lose favor. And Bible says he opens the windows, begin to pray. When they come for him, he relaxes into the lion's den. Daniel is not agitated by the lions. His presence is enough shutting up of the lions. They are hungry, I'm telling you. The Bible says when his enemies were put into the den, they did not land to the ground. They were finished in the air. The lions were that hungry. Number two, the one who is in the lion's den, the one who is sleeping on the sofa, who should sleep? <laughs> who should be eating? Who should be listening to music? Who should be having an anxiety attack? Daniel is fast asleep. The man wakes up at dawn. He said, Daniel, Daniel, and Daniel yawns. Ah, oh, yes. He said, are you alive? He said, of course, I'm talking. <laughs> As your gospel is, of course, that's why I'm still talking to you. Daniel does not pray against his enemies. He carries something. His enemies receive what is coming to them. Look, there's... <laughs> Look, there's a realm you enter, you stop praying against enemies. If you plan it, you will die. No, do you understand? <laughs> there's, a, there's a zone of life. When you begin to walk, enemies is not a prayer topic. If you plan it, what you are planning, Bible said they shall eat their own flesh. They shall drink their own blood because they shall gather but because the gathering is not me it shall scatter it, it, it's not even a prayer to, to pray now nah, you are in a certain place and that's what christians have lost so we've we've left that place and it's all mechanical now sweating trying to make it work by us mm -mm. and that's what i want to show you tonight do you know when you get to the park? No, all of that without the presence is not prayer. No, let me explain. That. No, let me. No, 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 no. Listen. If you go to the park doing that without the presence of God, you are no different from the Muslim who calls God five times a day. What is the difference between the Muslim and you who prays? We all pray, but they are praying to a dead being who has no presence. We are praying to a living entity. God himself, who is ever alive. So if I don't sense him, prayer has not started. <laughs> I want you to see why presence is key. So if I stand there, if you go like, prophet, I pray, I don't feel... No, you, you prayed, but you didn't sense his presence. So prayer didn't start. Prayer only starts. Worship only starts. I mean... Uh, I mean, oh, oh, oh. How many of you have confessed scriptures in the Bible and it has not worked before? <laughs> I want to show you why. It's lack of presence. I claim the promises of the Bible. Eh, eh. <laughs> I, I want to start, okay. Mm -hmm, so that. Uh, but I wanted to make you understand how important the presence of God is. You claim all scripture verses and it's not working. There's a reason. <laughs> There's a reason and I'll show you tonight. Hallelujah. So tonight I'm going to do something we call prophetic preaching. So if you are waiting for me to give you points, I'm not a doctor. It's not part of my name. Of course they told me my father is coming. Someone greater than me is coming. His gift is teaching. I will not try. So what I can do, I'll do. Uh -huh. So don't look at my face and say, when is he giving me point one? I'm, I don't have that one for now. So anything that bless your heart, just write it down. So we can, can we have a service? In, uh -huh. So we can flow and have the service. The way I look at my face, like you are waiting for me to give point one. So me, I'm giving you a prophetic bulletin. The one that will bless your life, write it down. If you are waiting for me to say this, mm -hmm, that doctor will do that one tomorrow. Where I'm starting from, I'm saying I'm preparing the ground. Okay. Are we agreeing? Alright. Now, to start with, in the beginning, God creates man in his image and likeness. Now, the story of creation written in English puts creation in a very abysmal representation of what God did. It as if it has alienated God who is in love with what he has created. It's as if God was just there, say, let's make man. Bra. Image and likeness. Bra. Walk. Then when you enter to eat the the, the fruit you shouldn't have eaten, get out of the garden. 
you know so we've even taught it in sunday school that when adam sinned god was angry with adam and adam went to you know adam was looking for god god was not minding adam we want to from the bible verse by verse it was god who was looking for adam not adam looking for god it has always been god looking for man he said adam where are you god was lifting trees raising rocks adam where are you <laughs> then adam shook a bush i'm here he said why are you hiding i heard your voice coming it means that no man has sinned and god is omniscient he knows all things he is still looking for the man who has sinned then god finally finds this man and he says i don't like the dress you're wearing so god can you imagine an angry god enters the kitchen of heaven looks for a goat kills him i told you not to eat the apple you ate the apple <laughs> wear this dress don't do that again ah. we have a certain representation of god so till date when you sin you think god is mm, on you a certain pastor said he wanted to backslide because he was tired of being spiritual god was not minding him <laughs> so he says he's going to backslide so he went to the nightclub <laughs> said i'm going to backslide <laughs> so when he got there he, the barman came to say, barman asked him, say, what will you drink? He looked at the barman and said, uh, do you have Fanta? <laughs> <laughs> and he brought him the Fanta. The barman was shocked, but he started drinking the Fanta. Then he looked left right, left right, then he started sensing the presence of the Lord. Then he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, what are you doing here? I'm here to backslide, leave me in peace so I can backslide. Instead of him having peace to backslide, he said he started having conviction for the strippers, the guy smoking with he says a strong bedding. It's like, oh lost souls. <laughs> it tells you who God is. Contrary to what you have been taught, it tells you who God is. But long story short, God has created man in his image and likeness. Mind you, first John 4 8, God is love. And he has created an entity called the object of his love if he loves someone must receive love you can't say you love without someone receiving it you can't say you love without expressing it so bible says hearing is love perfected that we love the brothers why once i express my love to my neighbor i've perfected the expression of love so he says, hearing is love perfected that we love one another so he laughs but there's no one to receive love according to the book of proverbs chapter 8 verse 22 wisdom is speaking which is christ he says, I was before him. I was ever his delight. Before the worlds and the, the and creation was done. He said, I was ever before him. As one brought up with him. That's verse 30. Verse 22 said, Thou possessed me in the beginning of thy ways. Before the, the, uh, the ancient works of old. Verse 30 says, I was before him. I was daily his delight. So Jesus Christ was the only beloved of God. He was the object of God's love. But once upon a time, when God said, Let us make man in our image and likeness. He was creating certain beings to become his counterparts. You have no idea the jubilation that was in heaven when they said, let us make man. So the angels asked in Psalm 8, what is man? Because they don't know what the man is creating. And John 1.18 said, no one has seen God at any point in time, except the one and only Jesus Christ who has come from the Father. He has declared him. He has made him known. So not even the seraphs in Isaiah 6 saw him. Because Bible says they were created with six wings. Two, they covered their eyes. With two, they covered their body. With two, they fly. So the moment they were created, they had eyes covered. They have not seen God once. So to see God, they said, we are going to make an entity that looks like God. And I like what some theologians call him man the material god the tangible god god in the realm of material that's why even when god had to become into this world he had to enter man because he's the only person that can house godhood in this material realm now what happened was this god has made man in his image and likeness man is walking but he, our man is alone once upon a time before man came to the scene god was called alone not alone because he was lonely but he was alone because he was all in one everything was in him that's why he had to breathe in psalm 33 verse 6 for the heavenly hops and the sun to come out <laughs> by his breath he has made the starry host it was in him he brought it all out of him 
Alone, not because he's lonely. Alone because he's all in one. Everything is in him subsisting. He even released the realm called eternity for the purpose of time. Because he needed eternity to constrict who he was and unfolding for the future diminutive degradation of his godhood. That is irreversible. So that even today in godhood, there is a man. We have one mediator between God and man. Jesus. The, oh, oh, take it. Are you not doctors? Look at my phone. What do? Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> Someone say we are sorry. <laughs> okay. Let me take it again. I take it again. So God creates man who now is God in a material realm. We don't know God till we see man. We don't understand who God is till we see man. But this man was once in God. Uh, he was once inside God. He was one encapsulated inside God. And God brought him out as a counterpart. So God finally has a counterpart. But that is not the full counterpart he's looking for. When man comes, inside man is also another counterpart called Eve. Because like God, with man in him, man also has another person in him called woman. So woman now goes to sleep. This is Genesis chapter 2. A deep sleep falls on man. And woman is brought out of the side of man. And when this woman stands there, Adam wakes but doesn't find her. You know, the story tells you like, as soon as Adam opened his eyes, he saw her. But check the Bible well. After Adam woke up, the first thing God brought to him were animals. That's why he said in the phrase when he found woman, this is now. It means I've been looking for the now. The now, finally, I have found the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So now implies a certain time elapse to finding Eve. God did it like that. Though I've created what you carry and what you need, I'll still place it somewhere so that by choice you still choose it. Because love thrives in choice. That's why there was a tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You are a robot if you don't have a choice. Every guy pestering you like an evil ghost, tell him love has a choice. <laughs> I must choose you. Stop pestering me. Like if I don't marry you, I'll be cursed. <laughs> Give me space. <laughs> Am I talking to some sister? <laughs> if they say God spoke to me, tell them that God also spoke to Joseph. <laughs> It's not only Mary where the angel. The angel went to speak to Jesus. God is a perfect communicator. If I need you in my life, God must also tell me I also need you in your life. It is a perfect communication. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All of a sudden, Eve is nowhere to be found. But Adam is still, he knows that there's proximity, there's, there's something, there's someone he, he must find. And all of a sudden, Adam begins to scale mountains climb trees looking for the one who is his perfect counterpart and at last when he finds her look at what happens Adam now says now this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh there is a certain satisfaction that comes to Adam the Lord is watching it God is watching the whole drama unfold you know why from the very first time he was asleep and his side was open and the woman came out he smiled and said one day I will sleep like this one day, my counterpart will also come out of me. Her name shall be called church. As Adam slept for Eve to come out, I will also sleep like this. And in that same manner, he will scale all the mountains to find her finally for the bridal ceremony. He sees her and said, this is now bone of my bone. He said, the spirit say to the church. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the church. But at the finality of all this, the spirit and the bride will say, come. Then he has now said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Everything I am, the church has now become. 
But in between that story is an interesting story. Adam finds Eve. And he's so glued and captivated by her. She's without spot, without wrinkle, as the church must be. Without blemish. You can you can't you can, oh wow. She's holy, uncommon, a strange being, an entity we cannot define. Woman, that's her name. And he looks at her and he says, Man, you carry what I carry. Finally, Adam was created like God. God is love, so now man is also love. He needs an object to receive love. But when he receives the love, this is what the master is looking for. Not just for the woman to receive love, but for the woman to also say, I love you too. So he is waiting for the church to come to a place. Not that we are collecting God's love, but now our very life depicts that we too will love God too. Our time, our ideas, our test is because we too will love God. Please, are you here? Am I simplifying creation for you? This is like a play. Choreography team, where are you? <laughs> Listen to the tape and uh, do some things. Anyways, now, after he has found this person, this is the story I wanted to get to. The angels look at God and say, He is reclining. God, after seeing that man is fixed on Eve, and Eve is fixed on Adam, he is not jealous. Neither is he worried. But he's lost in deep thought. God, the creator of all things. Why? I see God does not exist again. Because once upon a time when Adam was alone, God was all Adam had. Now Eve has come. It's as if God is not needed. Their eyes are fixed on each other. Because Eve is also saying, when I look at the creatures, I was looking for one like me. I found you. Adam too said, I've also been looking for one like me. I found you. And the Lord reclines into the heavens, beyond the stars, beyond the skies. He enters the place called the solitary place, the only place where the I am can be contained himself. It is called glory. Beyond heaven, beyond the stars, he enters himself and he says, No, no. It is not good that I am alone again. <laughs> God is now alone. Because Adam has a counterpart. Man is not the full counterpart of God. The church is. So out of the church, out of man, he's going to get a church. So God begins a journey. And the angels look at God and say, Ah, if, if woman was that which was in man, and man, all along walking, had someone in him that would come out of him to be joined to him. Then so is the image by which he was made. The creator of the universe. There is someone in him who will come out of him who is capable of being joined to him. So he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Why? Because God is spirit. Oh, Rabbi Jevekesho. What am I trying to tell you? Then from the beginning, as certain parasitic elements and animals can thrive in a host medium, else their full lifespan and cycle cannot be achieved. They will remain dormant till that egg cyst enters someone's feet to begin replicative process. Likewise, God also. God cannot grow. He needs the human vessel as a host for growth. God is love. He does not grow in love. God cannot be exalted. He is exaltation. God cannot be lifted high. He is the highest. He is the pinnacle. But the beauty of God is this. I have a garden where I grow myself. <laughs> and anyone listen and anyone who will allow me to grow myself into beauty I will thank him one day oh is it not him that wills and does his good pleasure in us every crown was still his effort every overcomer's reward was still his grace every soul you won was still his anointing he is the source of virtue you just are a contact medium 
a conduit, a channel. The water hose does not produce water. It just allows water to pass through it. So God will salute you, not for producing water, but for allowing me to pass through you. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, this is the whole paradigm of what it means and the importance of being a host. Oh! Let the president say, I want to come to your house. Frantic preparations. <laughs> that the people become forensic. You put on UV light. Every screen to the room. Every, oh, Jesus Christ. Every, every cobweb you've never cleaned in the past five years. Because your eyes are used to it. You know, you enter a house for the first time, your eyes will begin to notice what you shouldn't notice. After a while, your brain says, it's okay. You can handle this. It's okay. The same bathroom you are complaining. Why is the bathroom green? It was a friend who also left it green. Why? It got to a point and said, it can be green. We are all green together. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the beauty of being God's host. Men, vessels, entities that become the hosting agents of the eternal one. Do you know what that means? Ah, to host God is not to confine God. Because the infilling of God is not a subscription. You can't keep God in a container. When God says he fills you, it's like putting a bucket in an ocean. The ocean carries the seawater, but the seawater submerges the bucket. And that's how God fills you. Tell you. So it is not when God is inside you. God has no, no, you don't have God as a bucket inside you. You have used the bucket to hold God. It's a lie. God filling you is a holistic enveloping. He is inside you, but you are also lapped up in him. That is why he said, I in them and they in me, that they may be one even as we are one so the infilling of God is not carrying God you think God is just uh -uh. that your nose you think it's the subscription and putting God in a small container it's a lie he doesn't just fail you yourself are filled to the overflow of him hosting the presence hosting the presence <laughs> It's a fearful thing to host that presence. And once upon a time, those who learned this truth were the ones who blew the skills of generations. Those who have not learned it will suffer for a long time. The fish will swim in coke because it's liquid. But inside coke is carbon dioxide. It's not good for it. The fact that something is fluid and it works does not mean it's the original habitat of a, a creature. So the fact that an image can walk and subsist for a while does not imply that is the original intention for the image. You are an apparition of a ghost. Because every entity must have an image. Then the entity comes to the mirror and the image is nowhere to be found. God came to his mirror and said, Adam, where are you? Adam is roaming. I imagine the image taking a stroke. And the owner is looking for his image. Hey! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so as your shadow is not a shadow without you. Likewise is man. Not man without God. That's why as soon as man left God, he became flesh. <laughs> what you call man is not man. All God created is not what we people are now. All people are our flesh. All flesh is grass. That is why even Jesus didn't come as man. Check the Bible. He came as sinful flesh, not man. Because man fell from manhood to flesh. <laughs> and in spite of everything you grow into, till we come to the perfect man. Not perfect God, perfect man. Why? We are God inhabited in the material realm. So in your maturity, is to the realm of perfect manhood. We will not become God. Our, our original designation is perfect manhood. Men that carry the fullness of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm building a ground so when daddy comes tomorrow, you can understand the dynamics and the foundation to why the presence is key. The presence of God says key. Oh, I can't hear you. Say the presence of God. 
is key. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is everything you will ever need. In today's world, the most precious commodity that's very difficult to find is the presence of God. Oh yes. If you didn't know, I'm telling you. Oh yes. If you didn't know, I'm telling you. Without the presence of God, things don't click. They don't add up. Your depression, your frustration is lack of the presence. Your anxiety, your worries, your fears is lack of the presence of God. If you have it, a lot of things will change. I just said to you, you come and stand there. Lord, 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 do something. Lord, rent. You know, you ever go to pray and it's like, start, Father, I give you praise, I give you honor. It's still boring, so you change gear. Oh, You feel like it's not going, you just kneel down. God, you lie. Lack of presence, you will sweat for a long time. You see, the prophet Elijah had the presence of God and he was very conscious. He didn't scream. Because of lack of presence, many Christians are praying like the prophets of Baal. You know the prophets of Baal? He said, oh, Baal cannot hear you, so scream louder. Ay, 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 Catch yourself. Ay, if you want to inflict yourself so that God can hear you, it is not in your screaming, it is in presence. There's a man called John Hyde. A certain pastor in, you know, in the U.S. said, he was working one day, he said, he saw, he saw him walking. He said, Mr. Hyde, please, I need your help. He said, follow me, sir. He said, he said, he said for what? He said, I need you to pray for my church. It was a Saturday night. So he said, okay, let's go. So he followed him and went. He said, sir, for a long time I've been struggling with my members. Nobody is coming to the church. Last time they were just 50. Please pray so that God will increase us. Okay. And it's been 10 years. He said, okay. So he entered the church. And Mr. Hyde, that is John Hyde, praying Hyde. Some of you know him. Pray high, just knelt down and held the man's hand. And he said, let's pray. So when he closed his eyes, he said, God! He said he was silent for two minutes. The man said he was afraid to open his eyes. <laughs> because when the man shouted God, he said he sensed an entity enter the room. And he said the man shouted God the second time. He said, nothing. now he was vibrating. Should he open his eyes? Should he leave? He said, he, he said the presence was so strong, he knew if he moved, he would touch something. So he, was, he said, Jesus. He was a, hey. You know that type of shout when the person shouts, it's like something has just crawled on your skin. Yeah. He just felt it. He said, the man shouted the third time. And after that, he said, it is done. And he stood up and went. The next Sunday, 500 people entered the church without evangelism. No, no, no. I'm telling you, it's not screaming. It is some people. Look, if you come to that realm, it is a corrosive, acidic realm. You carry God. When you sit in car, any devil, you don't have to saturate the car. When you sit there, Jesus sat with you. They will walk out. No, no, it's not a prayer topic that you are starting to find a plane. Uh -uh. You will descend. You will blast this plane. Mm -mm, it's not working today. Presence. During Benson, the hostess 20th anniversary at the National Theatre, Bishop James Sam was giving a testimony. He said, they were, they were going to a place. They used to stay in Benin City. And that's where most of the demons in Nigeria are, Benin City. <laughs> I think Benin, Calabar, Biafra region. And he said, <laughs> he said they were going there. So as they were going for the program, all of a sudden it was turbulence, lightnings and thunderings. The plane was shaking. The pilots lost contact. And the radar was off. So the pilot and other, uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, we have lost contact with control center. Bishop James said he was praying. He said, Jesus, deliver me. I'm sorry. So, you know that kind of thing? <laughs> There's a way a plane can shake. You start asking God for forgiveness. Whether the rapture is coming before you are. <clears throat> so he started praying, Lord, please doctor, help us. Oh, Lord, remember. He said, all of a sudden, Benson Idahosa stood up. And he said, play, assume position. Control center, make contact. He just declared, went to sit down. All of a sudden, the pilot said, we have made contact with control center. <laughs> Now listen. now listen, they are flying from Lagos to Benin City. He said by the time they made contact to control center, they were all the way at Port Harcourt. They have deviated. So they landed finally. And when they landed, it was still raining, lightning and thunder. Bishop Sir said, ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so Bishop, Papa, we are, I'm going to arrange for a bus. He said, then he said, ah, Bishop said, Ghana boy. He calls him Ghana boy. He said, Ghana boy, come back. 
He said, Papa, the rain, so I want to organize the bus so we can go to the, the meeting. He said, Come back. Go and get our luggage and book the next ticket. We are going back into the air. He said, Ah, Papa, how? <laughs> God just delivered us from plane accident. And we shall be in the house and say, We are going back into the air to finish Satan off. <laughs> Look, you see, these are men that will enter Satan's dungeon. <laughs> You have given time that God has delivered you. He said, we are going back to finish the issue. We didn't finish. Let's go back in the air. <laughs> Dangerous men. Because they understand presence. Look, I came to whet your appetite to want this thing. Presence. You don't need to be scared in a bank that you are working in. A medical facility that you are working in. That a consultant will worry your life. You, then you don't know who you carry. You don't know who you are hosting. When you realize someone has HIV is or tuberculosis or when this airborne disease came, it, who covers the nose when someone is carrying virus? Who wears gloves, protective clothing, not to be infected by what someone carries? So when you carry presence, it's not you who is careful, it is those who are around you who are careful. Because I carry something that is more and higher. I can buy your watch and I know you're a wizard. I'll come and buy it. I'll, I'll, in the morning you see me again. Then I'll buy till you stop selling this watch. Because no, no, I carry the virus. Is it you or me? What carries presence? A man said he wanted more anointing for his ministry. So his friend told him I have some juju man will go and see him. So he said, Oh, okay, in the morning I'll go and wait for you there. So he was giving Google location. No, now they, they do advert and everything. So he was sitting at the shrine waiting for the guy. So as they were waiting, Google location, the guy was coming. Ah! So, huh? 10 left. So, 5 minutes away, 2 minutes away. So, he saw the guy coming about 100 meters away. Say, hey, yeah, you can tell me that, bro. Come up and come. So, as he was giving sign, he turned to look for the juju. The man had run away. <laughs> ah, so, he started running. He said, brother, they are coming to see you for power. He said, ah, who is coming to see me for power? He said, my friend. He said, that guy is bringing more power than what I can. <laughs> you don't know what you carry because you don't know his presence. All believers can see pastors in the plane and say, oh, Someone said, he said, one day he stood in the plane, when he looked, he saw Bishop, Papa Adebo, he saw Bishop, this thing, thing, they said, oh, he doesn't even need to pray. And if this guy in the plane, there's no prayer topic again, then he's not dying. <laughs> if you don't believe us now, when the man of God is around, you are safe. Christians, <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ. Presence. Presence. I want you to become presence oriented. A lot of things will end. A lot of sweat will end. A lot of it will end. See the presence of God. See the presence of God. When man was created, man was created in the image and likeness of God. In 2 Corinthians 6, 16, the Bible says, Have I not said in my word that I, I God, I want to live in them. I want to walk in them. I want to have their experience. Which means to say, if God created us for his inhabitation or his full... For instance, you are medical students. In parasitology, you know that not every host is conducive for certain organisms isn't it please am i right uh -huh. some of the things they have intermediary stage they go into snail after a while they enter human being for about some months tape worm and those things then they, they mature in human beings the human beings is the final is the destination isn't it some others too they like sheep they don't like human beings oh am i preaching uh -huh. you are doctor so you understand hosting so it means that a host is designed with the nutrients, compartments, capacity to enable what is he is hosting to multiply. The host carries the environment and the nature for the conducive thriving of what he is hosting. If man was made in the image and likeness of God, then ladies and gentlemen, I came to tell you, you were created with all your internal organs and your head and your eyes to conducively host God. You, you, you have no idea. Zechariah 12 1 says there are three compartments in the universe. Show it for me. Zechariah 12 1. There are three compartments in the universe. You carry one of those compartments. And he likens the compartments to the spatial dimensions of the heavens. He said that, and the Lord who started from the heavens and layered the foundation of the earth and formed the spirit of man. These are the three compartments of space. The last is more vast than earth. The spirit of a man is vast than the earth. What, what you have inside you is, is far more than the gold in this universe. You have no idea. 
Isaiah 66, he said, where is the house you built for me? But a man of a broken and a contrite spirit, God will sit in you. God sits on heaven. His leg is on the earth, but he said it is in you he can stay. Do you understand? Isaiah 66. So it means that the host of heaven, the, the host of the universe, is not heaven. The master of the universe cannot be hosted in heaven. Psalm 114, the, uh, Psalm 115, the Bible says that, uh, uh, I think Psalm 113, verse 5, Psalm 113 verse 5. Put it there for me. Psalm 113 verse 5. I want to show you something very interesting. Aha. Alright. Verse 6. Look at the interesting language. Look at this. I want to show you. Verse 6. Who humbled himself to be hope. In other words, for God to even look into heaven, he has to reduce himself. <laughs> heaven is like a chair to God. So to look at heaven... God has to reduce his partial dimensions. If you even read the Bible, in Luke 24, verse 26, Ought not he to have suffered these things, that he may enter into his glory? Jesus was not glorified in heaven. He was glorified in glory. Not heaven. Because heaven cannot... <laughs> he said the heavens. The heavens of the heavens cannot contain thee. Even in his normal state, cannot contain thee. He is talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He says, even the son of man who is seated in heaven. So already as a human being walking on the earth, he was already in heaven. Not in glory. In glory, he was glorified outside heaven. Otherwise, heaven will blast. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you here? Please, are you here? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. All right. I'm not speaking of glory tonight, but I just want to show you something. So God has to reduce himself to even look into the things of heaven. So heaven is not the conducive host of heaven, of God. Neither is earth, because earth is his full to according to some, Isaiah 66. It is the spirit you carry. That is the realm of God. Your spirit is the housing unit of God. <laughs> Inside you is the realm, the space, the stretching, the dimensions. That contains this illimited entity. The undescribable one. The composer of all composed, yet without composition. The self-satisfied one. He is satisfaction and self-pleasure. He does not need your smile to make him happy. He is happy before you smiled. The one who doesn't need a chair to sit, and he said he is seated. <laughs> oh, the trees will do well for you. Or they could share them book and all those kind of things. Very Kenton Kosio. It's a very powerful something in Sam Rane. It's a serious something. If you listen to it, you see that the God we are talking about, He has chosen to be hosted in you. Do you understand what the Bible says in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 4? It said, For we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Hey, yeah, yeah. Do you know what treasure is? Treasure is Tesaros. Tesaros actually means treasury, the treasury house of a nation. All of God's wealth. All of God's military armament is inside you. No, do you, <laughs> you are designed as a conducive host. Your problem is this. You are not working as such. So the host is not having his peace to fully be hosted in you. You have given him a hostile environment inside you. But the day you come to that reality, when Jesus <laughs> Oh, the Bible says that. Let us make man our own image and likeness. Male and female made it them. In his image. Let us make man in our image. So you should have said male and female made he in their image. In Genesis 1, 26-27. But in 27 he said, and they made man in his. One person's image. One person's image. In his image. In his own image. And God created man in his own image. Now what is the image of God? Colossians 1, 15 mentions it. Colossians 2, 9. He is the image of the invisible God bodily. So the image that man is made in is Jesus Christ. So the image of the Godhead is a person called Jesus. So Jesus is not the second Adam, the way Greek interprets Jesus is actually the original Adam. Adam is the photocopy of Jesus. If Adam is a photocopy of Jesus, then it implies that I thought that man has nose. God doesn't have nose. No. The book of Psalm 18 said, By his nostrils he has blasted through the seas. So God has nostrils. Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the earth. Nothing is hidden from him. All the 
I've forgotten what Exodus 24 10 said. It says, As they ate upon the mountain top, they saw the feet of God as paved work of sapphire stone. God has feet. Oh, show me your glory. Exodus 33. And it will suffice me. He said, If you see my glory, you die. And the Bible says, I'll put you in a cluster road. And the Lord showed Moses his back part. God has a back. Is the arm of the Lord too short that he might not save? He has an arm. Is his ears deaf that he might not hear? He has an ear. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm talking about this, then Ezekiel 1, 26 down to 30 also said, And I saw him that was seated upon the chair, the one to look like a man, but he was like God. He looked like jasper, and like electron, and like amber. And he, he, he said, from his lower loins to his legs was like brass and amber, but from his upper loins, his waist, up to his chest. So God has chests. So everything you are, everything you are, you are totally designed as God's glove. A glove cannot work on its own. It needs a hand to make it useful. So a glove that is trying to work on its own is weak, frail, and can be bent by, by fire. So meaning that if I try to live my life without God, I'm like a glove trying to go where I want to go myself. There is no hand in me. The hand determines the purpose of the glove. The glove cannot decide to do surgery. Is the hand that enables the glove do surgery. That glove cannot decide to give a knockout. It is the boxer wearing it that determines the knockout. So you are not your own. You are God's battle axe. What it means is you are God's boxing glove. Why well, have you not read what the Bible says about even your warfare? For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. It means that I am only mighty when God wears me like a glove and gives the punch. So my apparel doesn't move. It is when God is through me. I'm not talking to it is when God is true that the punch is the punch. The weapons of our warfare, they are not psychicals. It means that it is not my personal engagement. It is not my feeling that I'm under ancestral case. I'm under delay. No! It is true God. Till God wears me and says that you know something, they have been coming from your house. Lift up your voice at this dawn. You see, if the Lord does not direct you, you are wasting your time. You are just pruning the hedges. You have not handled the root yet. It will grow soon and you will fight again. It must be true God. Listen, the hosting principle is a key thing. Because that is the empowerment of God. And check the Bible. Any person that hosted the presence of God, the Holy Ghost, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, what happened? Samson is the host. Hosting the Lord. The Bible says he rose up and tore the gates of Hebron and put it in the valley of Kedron. When the Spirit of the Lord came on Samson, he tore the ropes like twines, fresh grapes, fresh uh, ropes, dry ropes before fire. When the Spirit of the Lord came on Samuel, he began to prophesy. Men that were known in the city became men that were known of the heavenly city. Because now they are hosting a different entity. It's no more them. Hosting. Hosting. Or have you forgotten what Psalm 114 said? Listen, I'm staring you up so tonight. You tell God that God, I'm sorry for not giving you a conducive environment. No, as a Christian, I even wonder why you're listening to a little shatawale, you know, a little bit. You know, someone go, you go to someone's for very serious hot blues. Eh? <laughs> hot blues. Or where else will you be blue? But you have not realized that everything about you is a glove. Hmm, forget it. If you want to enjoy life, don't mix it up. Mm -mm. You are swimming in coke and you think that's water. You will soon be gasping for air. It tastes sweet, but there's carbon, there's carbon dioxide there. You will breathe it and you'll be shocked. <laughs> but fish is a fish in water. Man is man in the presence. What am I trying to say? The presence is your habitat. Outside the presence, that is why you are depressed. Check it. When you are not praying enough, no Bible study. You have not been to church. It's as if you are down. And you don't need Prozac. You don't need any, uh, what do you call it? Doctors, then, then. Endorphin, soro, what, 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 all those kind of chemical, hormone, balance. It's not that it's pre you lack presence. It's a lack of the presence of God. That one, you can't put it in capsule. It is kneeling down. Holy Ghost. <sighs> I will show you how to get it. It's a lack of the presence. That's why you are down. It is a lack of presence of God. That's why someone thinks that a beloved will solve his problem. It's a lie. We have not seen beloved. <laughs> okay. Read. 
So you grab and you are still not okay. Or you marry and you are still not fine. It's presence. 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 What did he say in Psalm 114? Look at what Psalm 114 said. He said, when the Lord... <laughs> oh, Kalabashapa. No, no, don't go there. I'm come to. Okay. Temple thou at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the God of Jacob. What did I say in verse 8? Who has turned the rock into standing water? So in other words, when you enter the presence of God, impediments become refreshing springs. That's what he's saying. Which tent? So the presence of the Lord makes a rock standing water. It makes tumbling block, blocks, stepping stones. The presence of the Lord. It turns obstacles into miracles. <laughs> it is the presence of the Lord. It makes flint fountains of waters. At the presence of the Lord. Oh, the presence of the Lord. Moses is walking. And the Bible says he sees a bush burning. And he says he, he goes back to wonder what kind of amazing thing is happening. Because usually in the desert, the lightning will strike. And the bush will be on fire. But he said that the thing is on fire. It's not burning. So he goes back to wonder what is going on. And when he goes, he begins to get, he said, the bush is burning, but it is not consumed. What is going on? Mega Boreas. He gets closer. As he gets closer, he hears a voice. Take your saddles. The, the, the ground you stand on is holy ground. And the Bible says that as he takes his saddles off, the Lord starts talking to him. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he starts revealing himself to him. The Lord spoke and spoke. He said, I've heard the cry of my people and I've come down to save them. Go down and deliver them out of Egypt. Moses enters town. And he enters Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh! God said, let my people go. That they may worship him. And Pharaoh begins to insult him. He triples the workload of the Israelites. He lets them build brick without straw. He intensifies their work. And he goes to the Lord. And the Lord said, what is it you have in your hand? He said, this. He said that rod I have, you have in your hand. Stretch it and start doing miracles. Why? The stick was the same stick. And stuff he was using to deal with sheep. When it met God's presence, it became a miracle working rod. The rod's name changed. It became the rod of God. At a point, it was called the rod of Moses. When Aaron held it, it was called the rod of Aaron. That same stick for taking care of sheep. Once it entered God's presence, it had miracle working powers. <laughs> Not only so, Bible said after that, he goes again. And the Lord tells him that, why are you allowing Pharaoh to pester your life? I said, tell him to let my people go. Then in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, he said, I've told you a lot of things. I'm not going to change what I said. Now, see, I have made you God over Pharaoh. See, I have made you... In other words, he has told him a lot of things. But he has not imagined himself in the things he has told him. He says, see, so as soon as Moses hears this, now Moses does not meet Pharaoh through protocol. Pharaoh is passing through town trying to buy some milk. Let my people go. It's what he said, huh, Pharaoh, let my, and the Bible says, as Moses kept doing this, oh, Kalabashaba, something happened. Finally, when the people were going, Bible says in Psalm 114, when you read it from the beginning, he says, what ailed thee thou see, that thou didst run away? The man has now encountered God's presence. So even the sea saw him, and Bible said the sea fled. The Jordan saw him and drew back. The mountains began to skip like rams. And the little hill, like it's what a lady, oh Jordan. He, 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 what? A man is coming with the presence of God. So when the sea saw him, the sea had to give way because a man is coming with presence. You have no idea what the presence can do for you. You have no idea what the presence can do for you. By the presence. He said, don't, don't send your angel, won't you yourself. Bible said it was a pillar of cloud in the day. And a flaming fire in the night. When the enemy came in, they were sleeping. Whilst the pillar of fire was dealing with the enemies. When they were hungry, the presence brought manna. When they wanted meat, the presence sent a wind over the sea and brought the quails four feet from their height. So the birds were now flying at this height. So you just have to put your hand in the cloud and pick the bird you want. Yeah, you don't have to stone it. You have to just stretch your hand. It was so easy. It, it, the presence of God brings you to a realm of rest. What people sweat to get, the presence makes you relax. In typology, Ruth chapter 3, chapter 2, the Bible says, And Ruth, she labored in the field all day and gathered one ifa. Boaz was standing somewhere watching her. He said, allow her. Ruth chapter 3. Naomi said, Boaz is her cousin. He's her kinsman. 
according to the law of the Jews, if you are related, you don't work in my field. It's strangers who work in the field. So since we are relatives, there's no need to work. You are a relative to Jesus Christ. Wherefore, he's not ashamed to call us Adelphos. We are brothers. Why are you working for what he has finished for? But you see, the beautiful thing about it is that Boaz allowed Ruth to work, though he knew it was Naomi, his cousin. The Lord knows that he has finished the work, but as long as you want to work, because he is free willing, he allows you to continue working. When you are tired, he is waiting for you. <laughs> but the next day, when Ruth came, in Ruth chapter 3, Bible says she came to sleep at the feet of Boaz at dawn. At once, she was working without Boaz's proximity. But on the second, she came to sleep at proximity at the feet of Boaz. When Boaz woke up, he said, give her six times. And Ephah takes care of ten days. Six Ephahs, sixty days. Sleeping gave her six times more. <laughs> presence. You see, hey, you're you, you are learning, you are learning. You lack presence. <laughs> oh yeah. That's why every day you are, you, are, you are like, Prophet, you don't understand. I keep learning, but I keep failing. There, there's a lack of the presence of God. If the presence of God is there, Oh. <laughs> I know that you will go more into it tomorrow. The presence of the Lord. Bible said, for 40 years, they never hungered. Neither did the soul of their sandal wear out. Their dresses were not faded. 40 years. Because there was a certain microcosm. Do you know what happened in Goshen? Goshen is not at the outskirts, it was in the center of Egypt, it was the slave town. Lights went out everywhere. Only Goshen had light. That's what presence can do. It gives you a personal environment. What is hostile to others? Presence will give you a special one. It's, it's not hostile to me at all. I'm cool. I'm fine. <laughs> it gives you a personal atmosphere. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. It's all you need. Say it's all I need. Say it's all I need. It's all I want. Tonight, I want you to see the importance of the presence of the Lord. You can't do without it. It's your habitat. Every blessing, I can do all things through Christ. You can't do all things outside Christ. It is only through Him. In Him we have redemption. Even the forgiveness of our sins. In Ephesians 1.7. In whom also. I mean, why you? Oh. Time of, in whom, in Him, in whom, in Him. Everything is about He being in proximity. If he is not there, it's not going to work. The Bible says, with God, all things are possible. With men, things are impossible. But with God, the word with is, it has to, is the word para. Para means in nearness. Para is nearness. If you, are pro- if you are in proximity with men, you will fail. If you are in proximity with God, it will work. So with God, the word is with, not by. Not from, it's with. With God, all things are possible. It implies a partnership. It implies a certain continual living in the presence. That's when things are possible. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me even shock you about faith. Faith cometh by hearing, isn't it? And hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. But according to the original translation, it's actually faith cometh by hearing and hearing from God. What am I trying to say? You have claimed all the promises in the Bible. But you have not heard the voice of the verse. Every verse has a voice. <laughs> so you can read, by his stripes I'm healed. He took away my infirmities. You are quoting things. It's written. It's general for everybody. It's like going to court and reading the whole constitution. <laughs> if you don't know what applies to you, it's in vain. It's the same way as quoting all the verses in the Bible, all the promises. You claim the promises of God. If you don't know what God has said to you personally, all the promises you are claiming, you will still fail. Faith cometh by hearing, not reading, hearing. Hope cometh by reading, Romans 15, that ye through the scriptures might have comfort and hope. The reading of the scripture might have comfort and hope. So when you read the Bible, you have comfort and hope. But faith cometh by hearing. What is hearing? You are reading. Malogo Robosha. Isaiah 34 said, Set ye the scriptures and read. For in them my spirit has guarded. So the spirit of God that's speaking. All scripture is God breathed. You must find the one that breathes to you directly. As you are reading, by his stripes I'm healed. Then you hear the voice of the Lord say to you, Yes. By his stripes, I have healed you. 
That is when faith starts. It's not. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody to help somebody? So when you're reading the Bible, you know, it's fine. You are getting hope. You are, you are learning what is available. But till that word becomes customized to you, faith will never be born. Faith will never be born. Why must you heal the sick? Yet it's written. You've been quoting them. I'll heal the sick. But it has not become personal to you. The voice did not tell you that so on this wise, you too go and heal. Till that voice comes. That is the stronghold of faith. Has God said. That's why Satan came. To fight Adam based on what God is saying. Because if you can hear what God is saying. Or have you not heard what the Bible says in Psalm 23? He said the voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. Yea, the wilderness of Kadesh Barnea. The voice of the Lord shall make the hind to calf. It means that anything that is barren. When the voice of the Lord says be fruitful. Fruitfulness starts. It is the voice of the Lord that quenches the flame. It parted the flame. The voice of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, the presence is all you need. You can't have the voice without the presence. You need his presence to hear his voice. When the Lord said to Moses, Go, I shall be with you. That is the strength by which Moses went towards the sea. Because God said, Go. If God didn't say go, that going to the sea was in vain. When the Lord said, Go down, I'll give you them as your as I'll, I'll give you victory today. That's when the rose have to go and fight. God said to Gideon, take 300 men. It is what Gideon had that made him take 300 out of 300,000. If a man hears God, he cannot disobey. The reason why you are disobeying the word of God is many of the things you are trying to do, you read it. You didn't hear it. If you hear something, it, everybody is asking, why are you doing this? You tell them, I have heard. When you hear, even if it's against common sense, because you heard, faith comes alive. And that is what the presence can do. So in the presence, Leboja, there is the blessing of his voice. And that voice is one of the highest commodity. Have you ever been in trouble and you're not hearing God's voice? It's the highest commodity in this universe. You know why? Nothing was made without his word. And his word is contained in his voice. Because his voice is an amplified word. John was the voice in the wilderness proclaiming the word. The content of the voice was the word. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in proximity we hear his voice. And if you hear his voice, something happens to you. Lazarus come out. And Lazarus came tamping out. Lazarus came tamping out. And lastly, let me show you a secret. Can I show you the secret? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 17, Jesus was praying and he came to meet the Bible struggling with a demon. And when he came from 15 hours, Bible says when he got to the scene, they had tried casting this boy out. The boy was not free. And the people were like, Jesus appeared and said, come out. And the boy was fine. Then Peter was like, ah. The same thing the man did, we also did it. Because if he did something new, they wouldn't have even gone to him. They would have advised and said, oh, this is what we didn't do. But they saw that Jesus also said, come out. They also said, come out. But Jesus' own work, theirs didn't work. And Jesus looked at them and said, oh, ye faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? And I was like, ah, what kind of answer is this? I taught you as a master should say, you have not been learning what I've been teaching you. But his answer rather to them is, how long shall I be with you? It means that how long shall I be with you is the answer to their faithlessness. It means that your casting out devils and healing the sick is because of presence. It's because I'm there. That's why it works. <laughs> so he said, said, oh. So you thought you can do it by yourself. How long will you realize that it's because I'm with you? That's why in the book of Matthew 28 verse 20, he is ascending to heaven now. Tomorrow we'll go into it. Only presence and Manifest presence. Jesus is ascending to heaven now, but he's telling them, I'll be with you. Can you imagine? He's relocating, but he's telling them, I'm still with you. <laughs> you see me entering heaven, but I'm still with you. Because anything they are going to do, God must confirm the word. Being present with signs and wonders. If he's not there, you are going to sweat. That is why it is a dangerous thing to go where God is not. Don't travel to any country God is not waiting for. You there. You are going to sweat. No matter how qualified you are, you start chopping grass. 
and you go like a mentor. Yeah, you'll be a professor doing filling station job. Nobody will mind you because you have gone to a country God is not there. <laughs> How long shall I be with you? And go where God is. You will be shocked. You will be sh- when Abraham went where God was not, he had to lie that Sarah is his sister. When Joseph went where God was, he became the prime minister of a whole nation. Because God was with him in prison. That's what scripture said. He was with him in prison. In Potiphar's house he was there. Do you know because God was with him, Potiphar's name was mentioned. Check it. Since Potiphar demoted and took Joseph out, his name was never mentioned in the book again. There are some people, because they carry the presence of God. Your st- <laughs> Let me put it this way. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Can I put it this way? There is a blessing Esau lost. Esau's blessing was not the lack of property. Because if you read the Bible, when Jacob met Esau, Esau told him, I don't need anything you are bringing me. Because look at me. I have my sons. I have my cattle. I have a lot of things already. So not, And the man's father told him that. The blessing is finished. Jacob has stolen all the blessings. So why is Esau still prospering? Because I thought he has been told that the blessing is finished. Then I was praying. I said, ah, why is it the yoke? God said, it's not the yoke. God said it's more than that. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, this is the blessing. It is called the blessing of the firstborn. It was supposed to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But Jacob stole it. So even in the ages to come, Bible said, and Jesus shall be seated at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Esau's name will not be mentioned. Then ask God, Lord, then what is the blessing? He said, yes, a man can have a car, can have a house, but without my blessing, his story will not be used for my story. So Esau is blessed. But the only time we hear from Esau from that day on was Edom is fighting Israel. They are antagonistic to God's plan. <laughs> what am I trying to tell you? In the presence of the Lord, you can't miss providential will. You can have a car and have a house, a career. But because God's blessing is not on it, because he didn't proceed from his presence, do you know what will happen? You are like a normal story in the world. I will hear someone's story. He bought a car. Wow, God is faithful. There are some people who hear that story. God is, you know why? Because when you listen to the annals of God's generals and people who have become serious in the Lord, such men's name will be mentioned. These are men who have the blessing. It is a blessing to be part of what God is writing. That is the blessing. It is not the car. That's why you go like, so God, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm your child. I'm still carving trails. Look at Abu Bakr. He's not learning. He's still, t- he, he, it's not that. He's not that. That's not a blessing. It's not an A. That's not a blessing. Because Abu Bakr doesn't need to be born again to have A. <laughs> they don't need to be born again to be specialists. Am I like, are all specialists Christians? Come on now. But the specialists who are Christians, their story is part of God's story. On that day when the lamb opens his book in the ages to come and John was a doctor in Confanoche and through John's life Sister Josephine became serious with the Lord and Sister Adwa was praying in tongues and uh, your name will be mentioned in the ages to that is the blessing. Esau lost it. Esau lost it. But Jacob stole it. This is what you must understand. The presence of the Lord will put you on the right path. And let me shock you when it comes to the power of God. When Jesus had 12 disciples, no one was ever sick. Not once did any disciple fall sick. Why? Presence. When the presence of God is in view, sickness is not a prayer topic. This is what Daniel had. The presence of the Lord was able to shut the mouths of lions. So the man entered without praying, but the mouths of lions were shut. They couldn't do anything. Why? When he entered, the alpha male had entered. Daniel entered with the presence of the lion of the tribe of Judah. There was a senior lion in the den. So the man didn't have to cry. You see, when the man carries presence, he doesn't go like, Lord, why me? Why are you doing this to me? My enemies, hey, you are lacking presence. But Daniel carried presence. So he knew that he was going to be arrested. When they arrested him, he didn't cry once. Open the door. He said, allow me. I'll go myself. He entered the lion's den, caught one, <laughs> the big lion, said, ah, hello, how are you? I'm spending the night tonight, just sat down. Oh, oh. Didn't pray once. Not once was it recorded Daniel prayed in the day. 
He just relaxed and started relaxing. Why? He entered with the alpha male. The Hebrew boys in Daniel 4, the Bible says, as they entered the fire, the men throwing them into the fire started feeling the heat. And the boy said, if, if our God does not save us, we will not bow. No, you see, they didn't need to see him in the fire. The fact that the fire was burning, the people throwing them inside and didn't touch them should make them know that he's already in the fire waiting. He was already waiting the flame because they are throwing them and the people, they, are, they are being burned. Some even died and they are still entering the fire. They should have known before they saw him that he, someone is waiting for us there. They entered the fire, they were standing there. Why? Our God is a consuming fire. This fire does not consume. The consuming one can consume it. So as they were standing in fire, fire met fire. And they were all standing there. Then the, the book of Nezah said, I see one like the Son of God. Listen, there's something about the presence. <laughs> when it comes on a man, he gets into realms and dimensions. It's not for the sake of power. Why? He has become God's palanquin. Do you know what it means? The way a chief dances in the palanquin. Bible says in the book of Isaiah 62, the Lord shall rejoice over thee. The word rejoice means he shall dance over you. And how can God dance over you? When you are standing, it means that you are carrying him on your head. And God is displaying his dance upon your head. Become God's palanquin. Don't just carry anointing and dissipate. No. Anointing is powerful. But after anointing, when you go and lie down, the reason why some people go like, when I finish preaching, I face the attack, is because they lack presence. When you carry presence, even after preaching, there is a continuous zone. Captain Kuma is being smuggled through the back gate of a restaurant. They are Buddhists, they are Muslims, people who are not even praying. They are cutting their, their onions and they are falling under anointing. It is not prayer, it's not anointing, it's presence. There is a certain ambience. Oh, it is called a glory zone. It is a certain functional radius by which God is God Himself in your life. That's the way you enter, you sit in the car, you don't have to preach. As soon as you enter, someone goes like, oh, oh. Jesus entered the boat. He didn't preach once. Oh, cast your net here. Quite a bumper harvest. He didn't preach. Oh. Peter said, leave my boat. I'm a sinner. He started confessing the sinner's prayer. I'm a sinner. <laughs> when a man carries presence, when he goes for evangelism, he doesn't need to shout, come to the Lord, come to the Lord. As he's preaching, people will run and say, it's okay. What shall we do? We have preached enough. It's okay. That presence. When you carry presence, when you enter your room, and your roommate is not a believer. Ah! He will tell his friends that, that guy, that guy, I see him and then something they do me. <laughs> yes, presence. There's a realm like that. I know a certain man of God. He went to an engagement and they told him to pray. And as he was praying, the groom, after the meeting, came to tell a Muslim guy. The Muslim guy came to ask the groom that due to that pastor who prayed. He said, No, we don't know him. And he said, Hmm, Charlie, I'm a Muslim or bad. The way the man prayed, some, I want to go to his church. Then the groom said, Charlie, not be you. Me and Crowder, they were praying for my rings. I nearly fell down. Imagine. They did not touch him. They are praying over rings. He said, the prayer, it is called presence. It is a realm. You enter, I'm telling you, you can enter a place. Everybody is facing this way. As soon as you enter the doorway, everybody's neck begins to feel heavy. Turn your head. Somebody has brought, the way you can sense evil presence, there's also the realm of God's presence. You can enter a hospital, and as soon as you enter and pass a patient, you realize they are all of a sudden they are laughing. Presence. And the Bible says, and they brought the sick to lie in the shadow of Peter. And everybody they placed there began to get healed. Why? The man carried presence to the point where the inanimate things about him was anointing and healing people. He was not even aware. A certain prophet went to pray on the park. As he was praying, he was sweating. And the place he sweat upon drew a mark. The next day someone was walking at dawn. And he had lost a toe. When he hit the sweat of the man of God, a toe popped up. Pah! presence. Bishop Ajinasai was in Nigeria. After the crusade, after many hours, they brought the dead and put him on the stage. By morning, the dead were back to life. It's called presence. It leaves a residue. When you wear a dress, it leaves residue in it. It's called presence. You sit by a person, and you wear, there's an anointing. You sit by a person, like, all of a sudden, your eyes are open. You can pick things. You're like, how can I sense God like this? It's called presence. Not everybody has it because nobody, everybody craves it. But if a man will crave the presence, Moses was white. He said, I don't want your angel. I want you yourself. If you don't go with us, nobody's moving. This is a man who craves presence. Can you imagine Moses? Moses has seen God 
caused Red Sea. In fact, he saw him on the mountain. The bush is burning. He saw the rod turn to a snake. He saw the Lord do all the miracles. He saw all those miracles. Then in Exodus 33, he comes and says, show me your glory. He's a man who is thirsty for presence. After all Moses has seen, God has opened the Red Sea. God has given the Ten Commandments. Moses is still asking, I want more. More glory. More glory. So that we all with unveil faces. We unveil faces. We behold. There's a presence you need to carry. Consumer presence. That one it stops plenty argument. Bible said when Jesus was answering, when Pete, Stephen spoke, his face turned to an angel. Bishop Adai himself gospel like he said one day he entered the plane. He was late. He just entered the plane. He didn't buy a plane ticket. He just entered his passport. Went to look for you know sometimes the plane has empty seats. Just went to sit in an empty chair. <laughs> when they got to America, you know, he was so confident he just sat in the plane quietly. When they got to America, descended, checking in the American immigration service, saw his passport. He said, Ah, he doesn't have passport, he doesn't even have ticket, he doesn't have what they call visa. How come he's sitting in the plane? He said he was in the, he was late and he had to be in the meeting in America. He said, What? So she wait. After one hour, they came back and they said, Sorry, sir. Next time when you're coming here, make sure you get a visa. Get your passport. When you got a passport, it has changed from green to red. Diplomatic passport. Presence. 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 When you enter presence, you don't have to argue. You stand there and the person looks at you, wants to be stubborn. As you are presence conscious, the person says, Okay, something about you. So you just go. Presence. When men carry presence, something about them. People feel, no, me and my show, I'm say, film. I'm like, ah, who is this guy? You don't have to tell them you're a man of God. They just go like, mm, mm, I'm sitting by something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Presence. Your best shit must be anointed. Presence. Not that type of anointing. <laughs> the one where you shake the whole room, you are begging. <laughs> Talking of proper anointing. And this is what I came to stir you up to. Daddy will go into the breaking up. Today I came to stir your spirit up. For the present. Because if I have not sensed his presence, then prayer has not begun. The reason why I'm confessing, in fact, let me tell you something. Confessing sins and saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Outside presence, you repeat what you just confessed. Because you must come to the place. Let me shock you. The Bible says, draw me and we shall come running. Psalms of Solomon 1 4. You can't find where God is till God shows up. Let me shock you today. Nobody can call on God till God calls. Isaiah 80. He said, quicken us, O God, and we shall call on you. Psalm 80. If God does not quicken you, there's no desire to pray. You think you can pray? The flesh does not like to pray. So that thing that makes you feel like, I need to do a fast, it was God who put it there. Not you. Where does God stay? We don't know where he is. That's why the Bible says, I am the way. The truth and the life. We don't know where Jesus and heaven is. Except Jesus. So, you will say you are getting to heaven without Christ. It's a failed venture. To start. So, if you don't have the presence by intimacy, you are going to frustrate yourself in prayer. But as you kneel down, you say, Vashtara. Lord, I love you. When you get constant in tune with his presence then now when you start praying in fact the Bible says Matthew 7 7 ask, seek and find that is all done in the spirit at the revelation of his presence outside his presence you are just banging on doors you don't even know which door to knock on and which door to seek and which door to ask you are just messing it up but when you enter the spirit holy vavashtana it's like even casting out devils I'm telling you the reason why some people struggle to cast out devils because they usually use their flesh. Come out, come out, come. and the demons also say, I won't go. It's, we are in the flesh. We are playing. Table tennis. Come out, I won't go. It's like, poka, 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 I won't go. Pa, smash. No, we are not smashing anyone. Because we are not in the spirit, we are playing games. Come out, I won't go. Hey, 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 yo, who are you? Hey, let's enter presence. It will stop there. Jesus does not talk. He appears and the person begins to react. Who are you bringing here? Who are you bringing here? He has come to cast that out before our time. Ladies and gentlemen, I pray you look for his presence. I pray you love his presence. And you do everything to keep that presence. It must not dwindle, it must expand. You stop praying, live over, stay rebish.
it moves from your bed it moves to your roommate's bed now it takes over the four square room you are sleeping in anyone who enters that microcosm cannot be sick it's like boss i like your room it, when i come here i'm happy it's called presence the same way you can enter someone's room you can feel heaviness the same way you can enter someone's room and feel liberty it's called the spirit of the lord liberty has cold air very chilled relaxing soothing atmosphere you like to be there you want to be there for hours while well, i keep talking i don't want to go presence that's why men of God who carry God's presence, when you get close to them, you don't want to go anywhere. You just want to be listening and talking to He is called presence. And I came to show you that you need it also. Because when you have it, you can't be sick. When Moses was in the presence of God for 40 days, he never said, I'm hungry. Never said, I want to wee wee. He was there 40 days. Presence shuts down biological processes. He even reduces aging. The presence of God. That's why you see Prophet Manasseh, Benihin, all those people, they are getting their 70s and 80s. But you realize that they are still looking normal. Young men, called presence. If the presence lifts, we see it on your face. Tonight, I came to ask you. I know you know deep revelation. But the Lord said to me one day, He said, Adam, what do you want? Revelations about me or me? And the church today doesn't like this. Someone told me one day, they said, Prophet, baby, I know you like Christ, Christ, Christ. I said, I said what, what should the prophet preach? Is it not Christ again? But you see, the church wants power. Do something. That is what we do. And you need to be do again. Because the thing didn't work the first time. Or even when it was done, because you did, you see, it was not done in the environment where it to be sustained. You lost it. But when you get the presence, I'm telling you, replicate effect. That revival you're looking for, we don't need to come and pray again. If ever implies that there is something that is dying, the Christian must be in renewal. Lightening the flames to the next degree. Not revival. Revival means we are dying. And we need to receive resuscitation again. And that was for the fathers of old. But we have received the Holy Ghost. It's called the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Renewing of the Holy Ghost. Which means to say, listen, we must increase the presence diameter. You must enter your class and your lecture cannot play games with you. Everybody goes like, Baza, the lecture is, he has teased everybody, talked to anybody and they have only you. He has not spoken like that to why? Mm-hmm. Presence. When you walk, everybody is watching you. Your life is a storybook because there's presence. People can last after you because the presence shoots you. People can come play games around you because there's a presence you carry. There's something about your face. People have a crush on you, but they can't tell you. Presence. <laughs> and then brother Jacuzco see you, oh sister, I like you. You are even working taxi drivers, like uh, sister, where before? You, you don't realize that something is wrong. Presence. Presence. Uh-huh. Every man was proposed to be married. It, the presence must stop that nonsense. It must be, how come you be attractively married men? It's not possible. It's not right. The presence of the Lord. You must come to this reality, ladies and gentlemen. When I heard of it, one day Dr. Benson Daosa said, he went to a meeting and they announced, he was in a car park. They announced, Dr. Benson Daosa is here. He said, 37 cripple jump out of the chair. He has not started preaching. He has not even entered the service. They announced he is here. People jump out of the chair. But he said he was in the hotel room. As soon as he drove his car into the parking lot, all the people in the wheelchair in the front row started walking. And he said something. When a man becomes presence intoxicated, do you know what happens? It's no more God with you, it's God in you. At that realm, your presence is now God's presence. When you show up, it's like God came. When you leave, it's like God was here. And you ask, who was here? It's like the story of Charles Finney. Who went to a town and for 100 years there was no alcohol sold in that town and they said who came to town he said there's a prophet a preacher called charles finney 100 years ago he passed through town that is the anointing saint patrick of ireland had when a boy was bitten by a serpent and held the serpent and killed the serpent and said i curse this snake killed the boy and said no serpent till date you will struggle to find snakes in ireland because one man 
carrying presence stopped that onslaught. The world does not need a lot of preachers. It needs one or two men who have contagious presence. Your hometown, your house, your father's company, parliament, that hospital, where corruption is, that much at your presence. Because it's not God's presence. Any person who shouldn't have been dead as you pass through the mortuary, Rakobe, Bavazi, Intelis. Sometimes you go out of zeal in the flesh. But if you go in the spirit, Braki, Brofa, Tandalas, your eyes are red. I met myself recently in Ted Seven Military Hospital with a dead body. I had to lay hands on that body. Yekobaga, Basheke. You have come by the presence of the Most High. I am not calling you because the Bible said there is coming a time and now is that they that are in the region of the death shall hear the voice of the Son of Man. Not the voice of a prophet, not the voice of a man of God. The voice of the Son of God. He is the one who is the first fruit of the resurrection. So if he's my body, body, if he's my company, he said to me one day, he said, Adam, if I'm with you, you don't have to pray for faith. I am your faith. Peter didn't have to do all night. Jesus just said, come. It was fine. So without praying, once Jesus is there, once there was presence, he can also walk. <laughs> you are trying to get what has already been given. And what has been given can only be maintained by maintaining one thing. The presence. The presence of the Lord. What have you done with the presence you got? Once upon a time you go and anointed, you knew God was on you. So when you go for a meeting, people fall down. Take it. That's presence. And now you feel it is you. Nobody's going. <laughs> so you have to touch your head a little. Receive it. The person is not moving. You bend the head further. Receive it. The person is not going. Now you smash us with surprise. Pa! You know that surprise? <laughs> with your glass show. Like, oh, thank you. You break my, you break my neck. But when there is presence, when there is presence, eh, you enter rest. You don't have to do anything. God touches the people themselves. You just have to be there. I've entered that stage, so now I don't care who falls down or doesn't fall down. It's God who is touching. If you, I don't care. The Lord touch, touch everybody. Want to touch? I came to do one thing tonight. Presence of the Lord. It's like a fire to burn inside you. If you want it, you get it. It's a craving. I want it, Lord. I know to solve my problem. I've been falling sick too many times by the presence of the Lord. Ken Hagen went to a hospital and said, to the man that God is here to heal you. I sense Jesus. He said, yes, I also sense Jesus here. And the man was healed. Presence. Presence. It's not effort. It's the Lord. Presence. And if you want to walk in that realm, there's a way to keep that atmosphere. When you are going down, you just lift up your hand and you begin to wave to Him. Tomorrow you'll learn more about it, ministering to the Lord. You just wave to Him and as this presence increases, Kobalali patient. That's the realm you don't pray for things for yourself. You've entered the next phase where you handle people's cases. You have no case. Because you are in presence. You, you don't have a case. And when you show up, things work. It so works that what is lost, you call it to appear. Because you carry presence. You carry presence. And I know tonight, God is going to release the gift of his presence to a lot of people here. I got that gift in 2007, no, 2006, School of Prayer. A prophet came to town, Prophet Manasseh. And I look at that man, and as he spoke, I said, Lord, I like what he has. I like it. And the Lord said, you can have it. He started speaking in tongues. The Lord opened my ears. I heard clear Hebrew, clear Dutch, clear Russian. God was just interpreting everything to him. That I, for three weeks, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep for three weeks. I just couldn't sleep. Then the Lord said to me, when a man enters prison, he can't be tired. He can't, because it's suspended by logical processes. 
I just said to you, when a bacteria enters someone's body, someone has parasitic worms in his stomach, he eats beyond normal. He is never full. Likewise, when God enters a body, God is not a parasite, but I'm trying to say that when God enters you, I understand what I'm saying. Someone should go and say, Professor, that God is a parasite. I beg. Let me just clever. I didn't say God is a parasite, but I'm saying just as a parasite is hosted by a vector. Likewise, when a man hosts God, God changes his DNA. Something about the person's physiology and anatomy is there's a mutation that occurs within. The more a man carries that present, something happens to the person. Something will happen to you. Something will happen to you. Something will happen to you. Can you close your eyes right now? Something will happen to you. We are in the presence of God. If you are sick in any part of your body, if there's any sickness you're facing, I just want you to speak to the Lord tonight. I just came as a precursor. I came to stir you up to know the importance of the presence of God. It empowers the presence of God. I need the presence of God. Outside the presence of God, we've not begun. Everybody stand to their feet. I just saw the Lord. I just saw the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
all over the place I see the Lord Holy Spirit let your presence be ever real ba 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 shakana hello I sense I sense the Lord ba la he te kesto ka ba la la people are becoming the host of his presence everything that is not of God that is hindering you from hosting him is being taken out right now oh glory Just let it be the keyboard and like no drums okay just just there's a guitar the keyboard just lift your right hand to him just lift your right hand to heaven listen holy spirit you are welcome in this place it's coming like a Oh thank you precious holy spirit. Oh. You are welcome in this place. I'm omnipotent father. I'm the sea's in grace. Thou art welcome. It's taking you to a different realm. For in thy presence there is he And all that I worry will be revived. Hey, Holy Spirit, my bobo bo shabab, you are all come in this place, precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, my baba shaka. Go, see that go, Baba Bosha, Patata. Oh, go away. Only for the father of the season. Thou art welcome. You are welcome. He is this place. Only for the father. You are welcome. Ah, bo 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 bo, keep it the hell of a shabbat, precious Jesus. Name above all other names Beautiful Savior Glorious God Emmanuel God is with us Perfect in man Living world Jesus Name above all other names Beautiful Savior Glory of God Emmanuel God is with us Perfect Redeemer, living well. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. In my soul. For I have touched. Yes, the hem of his garments. His name is 
Your hands are lifted to heaven now. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and look in his wonderful face, and the things on earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of His glory. If you're struggling with your Christian life, all you need is His presence. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in His wonderful face. And the things on earth. I will struggle again. Who will change with that? In the light. Mary just had to sit at his feet and look at his face. Who will change? Let him in the light. Of his glory. They looked to him and they were lighted and they were not ashamed. And the things on earth will go strange and then in the light of his glory. And you know the song When you walk with the Lord. In the light of Kababo Shahada Hadeh Everybody be quiet. There's a place when you enter into his presence. The music helps you gather, but after you gather, you don't need the music. There's a melody in your heart. And this is where we are tonight. This is where we are tonight. This is where we are tonight. Precious Holy Spirit. I see people here being baptized into his presence. Listen. Bible said when they saw him they stumbled and fell. There's something about his presence that says, Usher, just get ready. Something's about to happen. I see people just <laughs> being baptized into his presence. Something's happening. Usher's watch it. Usher's watch it. Watch it. Watch it. When you enter his presence, he said, We stand on holy ground. We stand on honey. Honey, honey, you stand on holy ground. You stand. Oh glory. <laughs> Not one, not two, not 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 ten. I see about fifty people here. Listen, I see this glory, glory, glory. Oh, oh. oh. 
It's all over you, honey. It's all over you. It's all over you. Aye, ya bo ja 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 la la la. Keba ba 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 ba. Keba ba 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 ba. Keba ba bo ka ri espresso la net. Oh oh oh. Take the glory. Take the kind of all should come quickly. Take the glory. It's so strong about you, sir. It's so strong about you, sir. Ko ba ba ba. You are climbing stairs in the spirit. Take the glory. Take the glory. Jesus. Oh, just help him, help him, help him, help him. Help him, help him. The glory, the glory. One, two, three. <coughs> glory. 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 Still fresh and innocent. I sense it so strong. I sense it so strong. In the middle section, I sense it so strong. Libra Kappa Pondelevish. Whoa! Whoa! Jesus, Bali, Ege, Zagish. We are catapulted. Nemo no no shekeleme near Salah. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Me Mondolo Moshengele has said. Honey, you don't have to go home with your sickness. You don't have to carry it again. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> new dimension. New. Oh, 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 oh. What? Me mo shata ke bo shale me be be li suprake na na mi jaro bregi mu baast basia de gela aratubra mo mondo bre a kariya su kabuka isis. Be ba bam bam ba, you're cut up, you're cut up. Ah, you're cut up. Glory, glory, glory. I sense it here, I sense it here, precious Jesus. I sense it here. Pa 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 pa. Pa 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 pa. One two, one two, one two, one two, one two. Ah, Jesus, moko boro bale ada bashada. Remo neka mama. That's it, 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 that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's the precious anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's it, that's it, that's it. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, oh, oh. Reba mama mato te kele mendele me ha. Reba mama no no mundo no mo shetele me ha baba. Can you just lift up your hand to heaven? Lift it up to heaven. Everybody be silent. I see the Lord with three angels behind him. And these angels are wearing a dress that is very resplendent and brilliant in white. Very white. Very white. Very white. I don't know. Very white. Very, 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 very. Oh. Fresh anointing. It's a new fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Now listen to me. Listen to me. We are receiving an anointing that is contagious. I'm talking about anointing that will stop sicknesses in your homes. Grace sister will carry healing to your families because you came you came and you become the ark of his presence oh you become the ark oh fuck oh glory mama ma ta 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 you cannot be sick you cannot be sick oh that's the presence of the Lord taking away every sickness in your body. It's clearing it. It's clearing it. It's clearing every deficiency in your body. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can't stand under the presence of God. Hey. Hey. Kabobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobob
There it goes, my dear. There it goes. There it goes. Fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, Lord, Lord. They are, they are, they are. Now, everybody, eyes closed. Please be, be very sabobo shari badia. Be vagoro goba vejmejra. Ara dribas, clavibras, mevad, ara gamora. Umbundo okura akbez bres, ivas menderk. Wajabim bed aigas meri, dearest brak ball by dust night. Bundo do don't scare, ba bijne, va bas nitus, near vogmajun vasta. Just me jali kim jalo, or umbaga, let's lie busundashia. I'm seeing ten people here, ten people, ten people, and it's like all of a sudden there is a flame of fire in your hand. I'm seeing it's like you're feeling heat in your hand right now. Ushers, watch it. There are ten of them, and I hear God tell me they are going to be literal, literal. It's like they are going to be literally acts of the covenant. Oh, oh. It's yours too. It's yours too. It's yours too. Yes, it's yours too. Wherever you get to the presence of God will break loose. Will break loose. When the act got to Obedidom's house, it began to prosper. The presence of the Lord is all you need for prosperity. It's the presence of the Lord you need for prosperity. Come on, help him, somebody. Help him. Help the gentleman. Help him, right? Help him. There is something about to happen. Can the keyboard just play for me? They say, I want to pray for you. Are you a medical doctor? All right. You're a student or you're, you're completed? You're a student. All right. Come. There's a strong apostolic anointing on your head. There's a strong ministry anointing on your head. And it's like I've entered your house and the Holy Spirit is opening my eyes to see that I'm seeing people who are pastors. A lot of pastors and people who into church work in your family. A lot of them, like church leaders, church elders. That's what I'm seeing in your house. Um, elders. This is Pentecost. Methodists, but they are elders. All right. And the Lord is telling me that there was a calling for some of them to enter seminary. But because of work, they accepted eldership. But they know they should have been reverend ministers. And I saw that the Lord was putting that clerical on your neck. And the Lord said to me, he says that don't be scared. You know you have a calling, but you are wondering why you are also studying medicine. I saw that the Lord had used you to open mission hospitals. I see two in the north. And I see the Lord taking you out of this country and I am seeing you in the southern part of Africa. I'm seeing you in Somalia, I'm seeing you in Sudan, I'm seeing you, God was linking you with UN. And I saw that God was giving you work with the UN, the United Nations. And I saw that as God was giving you mission hospitals, God gave you an anointing, you know, like world vision, world vision, world vision. And in the spirit, I saw that there was a mighty anointing that came on your head. And I saw that you had left your church. And God had given you strong apostolic anointing. And it's like you were starting your own ministry. And this is, I'm seeing this about 10 years after school. 10 years after school. And I saw that God had given you a wife that understood the calling upon your head. Because it was like 10 years after school, you have not dropped medicine. But the anointing you carried connected you to a lot of medical offices. And you had your own practice that you were running yourself. And the Lord said, that dream you have about having your own practice is of him. Because he's going to use you as a missionary. And you will enter countries with medical aid. And through that, the work of God, the work of God is going to be done. There is a hymn I'm seeing God giving to you to write. Because I'm seeing you, it's like you have taken a pen and you are correcting some of the words of some hymns that you sing yourself. You know this. You are a choir master. You are a choir master. All right. And it's like, uh, can I do this thing tomorrow so that we allow the Holy Ghost to? I just feel that 
the Lord should do his touching. I, I don't want to disrupt the meeting into personal prophecies. I, the environment is so sacred for that. It's 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 so sacred for that. Father, Le Abuja Bokorobi Aliari Spaces. We release that which is from above alone. <sighs> Upon him. Yes, it's done. It's done. Now everybody lift up your hand. In the next ten minutes. I'm a prophet and one day I asked God I said God how do I increase in my prophetic and I was in a meeting of a brother of mine and he said something that blessed my heart he said when you have Microsoft Word and you want to update your Microsoft Word all you have to do is to connect to Microsoft server and it will do auto update for you and the Lord said to me it's not praying to be extra anointed it is keeping to the source of the gift. You will always be updated in your gift. Don't collect the gift and run. And when you are dry, you are coming back. No. Be in a proximate relationship with the owner. So that there is always auto-update. It is updated even without you realizing it. People have to now come and tell you that, boss, of late when you minister, you are in another category. Because it's auto-update. You don't have to force to get it. He is close to you. So it is like auto-sync. You put on your phone, everything syncs naturally. You are always updated. And that's all you need. You don't need money. You need God. Ah. <sighs> healing anointing. Bring him the healing anointing. You are healed to heal. Precious Holy Spirit, I send your surgeon power through his body. Right now. One, two, three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Leave him, leave him. If I could find my Lord I will sit at his feet always and there are angels singing all his praise and all I want to do is to be here and never want to go cause I find rest in your presence and we know the song in your presence I am content in your presence I am content in your presence there is love plenteous Lord plenteous grace is beyond her idea Look, look, look. I just saw Catherine Kuman pass through the meeting. Look, look, look. Wait, 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 wait. Who are these? <laughs> Come on, give it to them, Lord. Come on, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. I saw the anointing of Catherine Kuman just pass through here. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Kobalekas. <laughs> Honey? <laughs> you will carry the presence unconsciously. <laughs> hey! My to school. Glory. The presence of the Lord. It's an anointing. It's an anointing. Lord, where are they? Where are they? The anointing gate Catherine Coleman. 
significant, significant, significant. The anointing of his presence all over you. Say of the Spirit of the Lord, it's all over you. It's starting afresh. It's starting afresh. Starting afresh. Precious Holy Spirit. Listen, I see anointings of men and women that carry the presence of God. I just saw the anointing of John G. Lake in this place. Listen, I'm seeing their faces. I'm seeing their faces. There are four gentlemen here. Four gentlemen. Four gentlemen. They are going to be known as men of the spirit. Ushers, come to my right side. Extreme right to the wall. There are four gentlemen here. I'm seeing them in this side. Check the front also. Because there's an anointing of the move of the spirit. Men of the spirit. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Catch them for me. Holy Ghost. They carry the anointing of John G. Lake. They will touch diseases that are dangerous and contagious. <laughs> Come on. It's on you. It's on you. Balekas. Aflafat. Fight. It's not for Latin. Balekas. Beaches. Day. Bacat. Palamapata. Tishne. Gagagasupes. Precious Holy Spirit. Lead me, Lord, and I. Lead me, Lord. I will follow. Lead me, Lord, and I will go. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> And Wait, hold it. Be very silent for me now. There are three ladies here. The Holy Ghost just said to me, he says, help them reaffirm their prophetic anointing. Now the Holy Ghost is going to touch those ladies right now because they have a strong prophetic anointing. They have been overwhelmed. Very strong one. Very strong one. Bring those three ladies to me, okay? I want to pray for them. I need to affirm it. They are running away because they feel incapacitated. They feel it's too much. And why will God use them? There is one more lady. Can everybody's eyes be closed because something is happening here? All right. There's one more lady. Bring her to me. All right. Thank you. Oh, there's an overflow to another one. This lady, um, there's the last person I'm seeing. Send her to the front, alright? Just send them. They're three now. Alright. But there's a fourth one. The Lord just opened my eyes. You dream a lot. You dream a lot. And a lot of your dreams come to pass. And you are getting frustrated that you are unable to do anything about the dreams you've been seeing. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Lord, you asked me to help this one. Bring her. Bring her. Bring her. Bring her. You're getting frustrated because your dreams come to pass and you're unable to do it. We even you saw family members die and you couldn't do anything about it. Bring her to me. Okay. Precious Lord Jesus. Precious Lord Jesus. All you need is the presence of God. I mean, you don't even need anointing for exam. Presence of the Lord, that God be in the exam room with me. You never forget. You are the omniscient. You know all things. All right. I, I, I mean, I, when I was in secondary school, I used to have the scripture. I've shared it here before. I see him. You know, that... Okay, you probably were, some of you were not here, but those who were here those times, you know, that Jesus, Jesus in John 7, John 7, 15 says, he said the people marveled that he knew things he had not learned. You can know, you can know economics without learning it. John 7, John 7, 15, you know, So you are wise, you are wise, you are wise. 
Mm. Can I pray for you, sir? You are wise. And you keep the tapes and you listen to them. You are wise. I want to pray for you. You know, see what it says? You know, John says he will teach you things. I, he remind you things I taught you. But, that, but this, this took me to the next dimension. He says, he knoweth these letters, having never learned. And I said, Lord, wow, there's a realm like that. I can know things I've never learned. That's the Holy Ghost. You can know all things without learning it. Because there's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Daniel understood foreign literature. The prophetic anointing is going to be very strong upon your lives. I'm telling you. Very strong. Ordinable. I pray for your house and I pray for yourself, sir. Dear precious Holy Spirit, I declare the practicalities of the things he's hearing. <laughs> Let us profit and be seen by all men. From today, what you practice from the word, you will get results. See the Spirit of the Lord. That's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It's strong upon you, sir. I sense it. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, Lord, for these five, <laughs> we spew out every divining spirit against your life. Every spirit of divination that gives you wrong apparitions and dreams, you're free from it. Precious Holy Spirit, I confirm the anointing upon their head. Strong grace. We establish them by the laying on of hands. Their head and their heart connected to the Holy Ghost. Can you? And lift up your hands. Step into his glory. Father. I curse every sickness at its root by the presence of the Lord oh by the presence of the Lord he will use you mightily he will use you mightily oh he will use you mightily he said the paper of the past he's burnt it that's a fresh start for you my dear he will use you mightily precious Holy Spirit Thank you, Lord Jesus. I curse every sickness at the root. We release life into your bodies. We are free from every ailment. Now, every asthma attack, every spinal problem, osteosclerosis, twisted spine, torticollis, your neck pain, back pain, chest pain. Whatever the problem is, waist pain, pelvic bone pain, any fracture in your body, every growth in any part of your body, we declare the healing power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, in the precious mighty name of Jesus. In the precious mighty name of Jesus. We dispel it all. We dispel it all. We dispel it all. We dispel it all. You are totally free. Every pain that was in your leg, every pain that was in your head, every pain that was in your back, you are totally free entirely. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. You cannot be sick. You cannot be sick. Oh, ay, 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 Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Holy Spirit now if you were sick in any part of your body listen to me if you felt pain in any part of your body you don't feel the pain again there was a growth in your body you don't feel it again God has healed vitiligo he has healed spinal problems curvature backache everything is gone I just want you to check it and come to me right now I'm thinking about five of you just five testimonies come down for me Come down from. I'm saying that if you are sick in any part of your body, you feel healed, you feel relieved, you, you couldn't see well, you couldn't hear well, your back, your neck, whatever it is, there was a skin rash you had, you check it, it's gone. I just want you to come, just two or five, two to three of you, quickly, just quickly. Anybody, quickly, run to me, all right? Don't go to your room if you are healed. Just come to me right now. Because, I mean, just come. Come and show yourself. So, I, you, you don't have to say it in the microphone, I'll say it for you. Just come, quickly. Just two or three people, just quickly. Please, what's happening to you? Your head on your back. All right. And you don't feel it again. Father, we thank you for perfect healing. Hallelujah. Yes, who again? Quickly. Quickly, yes. I want five people. Just five people. The presence of God has amplified. Men of God. Much more God's men. God's men. The Elijahs of God, the Daniels of God, the Adjuas of God, the Emmanuels of God, the Peters of God, the Chons of God, the Timothys of God. Enough of my labor that brings nothing. He is a co laborer with me. He works and I observe it. I am just a man fronting for God. God does the work. From today, that is your motto. God does the work through me. I am a man fronting for God. Hmm. As a foreign company looking for a local company to do business. I am that man. Not a man of God. But I am God's man. I am man. I am a man God can speak about me in heaven and say, Have you seen my servant Joshua? Have you seen Jonathan? Have you seen Samson? Have you seen Timothy? Have you seen Kwame? Have you considered Kofi? Look at what Yahweh is doing. I have descended in their midst. Hey, look at Clement. There is an anointing upon his head. Consider Theophilus. Oh, Theophilus is my servant in KNUST. I have taken him to Confanoche for a work. God's man. There is a chart in heaven for them. There is a book written about their stories and their life. Everywhere they go, it's not them, it's God. That's all they are interested in. That's all they are entitled to. God's men. God's men. God's men. Father.
We are going to sing a song that is popular in faith. Then I hand over the mic. Lord, I thank you. I'm a sanctuary. You might not sing it, but take your time. Pure and holy. Tried and true. So with thanksgiving. I am a living. Sanctuary. For Lord, I thank you. God, I'm a sanctuary. Fed of God and honey. By your precious blood. Fed of God and truth. Tried and true. With thanksgiving. I am a living. I am a sanctuary. sisters you have one she's older than you she's married she's not yet married okay father I declare life and joy unspeakable upon his sister I relinquish the hand of Satan of her head I take the hand of Satan of her head right now I destroy the spirit of anxiety because you see when I called you the Lord said destroy the spirit of anxiety destroy heart problem heart then he said the next thing i have to pray for is destroy fibroid growth in her womb growth in a womb father we cut and destroy all those things right now in the mighty name of jesus everything that has symptoms even during her menstruation pain and trouble and just to take drugs we cut the thunder in the name of jesus no surgery your hand has touched her. We will leave her mind of anxiety and worry. How old is she? 21? 25 or 6? Some of her friends are getting married. She's not dating. She is dating. When does she want to marry? She doesn't know when we end all of that in Jesus' mighty name. We end that in Jesus' name. And I, for you, I destroy heart 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 palpitations yourself you know heart palpitations sometimes you don't know what has happened you just, your heart is just and your doctor things are coming to your mind from today it has ended in Jesus name in Jesus name Father we thank you so we'll continue tomorrow by the grace of God the doctor himself will be here powerful anointed man of God it's a very hard shoes to step in so we were here because the thought Dr. George is coming. It's not a joke. Oh. So I've tried. I've tried it. So tomorrow when the doctor teaches and he gives us mic, uh, then they will continue where the Holy Ghost left off. Today, dear, this is how it is going to be like. Smart as here. I don't believe in one on one prophecies like that. That's why certain people like doing it in the system. Me who saw my say it's, it's a nice story, but presence is stronger. What do you think? You like the presence one? Give God a big shout of praise.